channel. This is Not Quite Nerdy, where we do the nerdy stuff so you don't have to. Uh, today's topic is in a world where one man had to find his nodes. All right, so I've realized something about myself. I've realized I love being on the couch with my wife after a long day of work, and I'm in the studio slash video game room slash my work office for my day job all day, eight hours plus a day. And sometimes I just want to play video games on the couch in the living room. However, my wife, whom I love very, very much, is usually um, watching her TV shows and stuff out there. So that being said, I realized I need to get back to a handheld gaming system. Now, I had a Nintendo Switch at launch 2000. 18, I want to say. So I got them when I got one randomly when they were like completely out of stock everywhere and I loved it. However, there were no grips or anything to, you know, make it feel good. So my hands were always cramped and my right thumb was always cramped and the normal things that you think when you think little tiny handheld games with big old meat hands. Long story short, I played Breath of the Wild, which was the only actual Switch game it felt like at the time. And I think I played Mario Odyssey. I think that was the only two games out. So I played those two games and then I just didn't really like everything else that was coming out at the time was either old or I had played or was going to be on the other two consoles. So what I did was I traded it in and bought a new MacBook. I ended up selling a bunch of my consoles, PS4, and a bunch of stuff back then. Upgraded my PC, kind of stuck with that route, played mostly PC games until the PS5 came out. I then bought a PS5. I bought a house and we moved into this house and I have a dedicated space to be the YouTube studio, to be my work from home remote job, my video game room. So I've got a 55 inch TV in here, a PS5, a gaming PC, all the accoutrement and everything that goes along with it. But I've been noticing that after playing 200 hours almost of Elden Ring, I kind of got sick of being constantly on the couch back here and playing video games, sitting upright and in this room. And I realized I missed my wife, which you know is a good thing. I've started getting the itch. So I know what you're gonna say. Well, why don't you order a Steam Deck? Well, I did. And guess what? I ordered it last September. It came out in February. I thought I'd have it by my birthday, which was in April. Still don't have it. Technically not getting it till after third quarter. So potentially Christmas or even later because of this chip shortage. So that kind of sent me down a spiral. In that spiral, the first device I bought to try and scratch that itch was this guy, uh, which is right here. And long story short, it's fantastic. The buttons are absolutely fantastic um, the joysticks are fantastic everything's fantastic it feels like a switch maybe even better um, the, the d-pad is great um, it basically extends um, and after I ordered it uh, from Best Buy I realized that the iPhone 13s because the camera bump is bigger we're not supposed to fit in it and when you put it in um, it kind of rests in there but like it's really awkward and it's like smashed. It's like smashed against it and it's supposed to be, anyway, so long story short, it, it's not the best implementation. So what they did is they actually came out the rubber piece that slots right in here and it slides into place. Oops, I got it backwards. Slides into place and makes the iPhone 13 fit, um, which is pretty dope. So I bought it, I played it PS5 streaming especially with my new Wi-Fi 6 router in the house, all Wi-Fi 6, everything, five gigahertz band, very good quality internet, I would say, was fantastic. PS5, PS Remote Play is incredible, almost indistinguishable from regular, just like playing it on the TV with a console and a, and a controller. And so I tried Steam, and that's where I had some seriously mixed reviews. Um, my PC, and the PlayStation 5 are both directly connected to my modem and router. So they are hardwired. So the only part of the puzzle that was actually being um, Wi-Fi was the phone itself. Now I'm only about 15 feet away from where I would sit on the couch to do my handheld gaming. And I got seriously mixed results with Steam. I would even say that most of the experience was not great. Uh, one of the weird things was that whenever you're using playing Elden Ring or Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy were the two games I was playing, both of them, you need to use the Y button and hold it to be able to select, you know, who's doing what or, or control characters or whatever the other thing is. And what I noticed is Steam's automatic 
like default button for the overlay is to hold down Y. So I went into the settings, changed it to the start button, I wanna say. And yeah, it was the start button. Went into the settings, changed it to the start button, went back into play and got so frustrated that it didn't change and somehow still wasn't correct for that controller that I'm returning it. Um, Apple Arcade is great. It's an awesome way for casual games, but there's none of the real games that we would want, right? And the whole point of getting the Steam Deck is for me to be able to play games natively. And so what I've realized throughout this entire process is that um, as incredible as this product is, and as good as it made um, gaming on the iPhone, the iPhone's still not a dedicated gaming device. So the other thing that I tried was Xbox Cloud Gaming, uh, which also worked, I mean, incredible. Now, I live in a part of the West Coast where there's really good internet, and I've, I have my own upgraded internet, access point, and Wi-Fi router, and all that stuff. So I have very good internet, I would say, compared to the vast majority of, of the United States. So your mileage may vary depending on your internet in the area you're in. But I will say that xCloud streaming was phenomenal experience for me. And I would say that the PS4 streaming within the home was incredible. Um, Steam is just, I don't know if it's the encoder or the fact that it doesn't use NVENC on my RTX 3080 or what, but it just wasn't there for me, man. I, would, I wanted it to be. So I've come to the realization that I probably need to get a Switch again. So I'm returning the backbone, it's going home, and I'm gonna test out the Switch Lite and see how that goes. So follow me for more videos on this weird journey to find the right couch handheld for me. Um, I've ordered a couple of other things, a Retroid Pocket 2, um, the Steam Deck's coming at some point, who in the hell knows when that is. And now that you've seen my thoughts and opinions and essentially review on the Backbone 1, what can I say? Thanks for watching, subscribe, hit the bell for future videos, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.